Thank you, Ian. It's hard to follow that level of enthusiasm, I have to say, especially on the question of public awareness. What does the public want and expect from archives? Pollsters report that there's an overwhelming consensus that old things should be kept. But as Jack Jedwab reports in his think piece for this summit, they're not so sure about what to make of the archives themselves as repositories of our documentary heritage. Far too many of those polled are essentially unaware of what archives do, and only small percentages have knowingly engaged with an archives. The polls tell us that in particular, uh, that's particularly true of Library and Archives Canada, the most high profile institution. There is nonetheless a lot to build on in the popular consensus about the worthiness of archival record keeping. Over the past decade, a group of prominent Canadian historians oversaw a project to interview some 3,400 Cana uh, Canadians about their consciousness of history. It was known as the Canadians and their past project. They discovered that a large proportion of the population integrates some kind of historical consciousness into their identities and are likely to turn to institutions of memory to connect to their pasts and to invigorate their present and future. My own experience has confirmed that. Several years ago, I was part of a group that included at least one person in this room um, to attempt to keep the United Church archives here at the University of Toronto. The groundswell of support that we found was astonishing, but so was the diversity of that support. We had people from widely different backgrounds coming forward to proclaim the value of that institution for their own work and their own lives. Not just the professional historians and genealogists that we might have expected, but novelists, journalists, artists, architects, musicologists, undergraduate students, and more, many more. I wonder how much archives recognize the breadth of their potential constituency and the importance of working with them. Certainly over the past decade, the wave of digitization of certain archival records has encouraged an archival populism that invites Canadians to access the records of their own families. We've heard about that already. The LAC's wonderful TV show, Who Do You Think You Are, was a huge stimulus to that enlargement, uh, to that engagement, and it was a sad comment that the CBC wouldn't keep it going. It was revived briefly, I gather, recently, right? Um, similarly, there have been efforts to engage students this has been also referred to, through access to census and military records in particular. One of my colleagues at York sent all 300 students in the introductory Canadian history course into the Ontario archives to use manuscript census data. And the feedback from students indicated this was an extremely positive learning experience. The relationship between archives and the school system, especially at the secondary and post-secondary levels, is immensely important and needs to be cultivated as the seedbed for deeper appreciation of the kinds of sources that will illuminate the past and the importance of preserving them. There's been a similar, similar, a similar surging interest in visual history. Among those looking for historical images are, in, are those in publishing and the media or preparing public history exhibitions in museums and historic sites, but certainly academics are using images and students are being encouraged to find them. Within the education system, there's a new emphasis on visual literacy, on the complexities of visual representations and the approaches to, use it, to interpreting them. Some archives have launched online exhibitions to showcase the visual resources in their collections. But on the whole, it seems to me as I've looked across, because I have a personal interest in this, I've looked across the country, many archives have been slow to respond to that demand. Far too many visual images have not been digitized, or, and, and most are poorly described for easy searching. In a visually saturated age, this has to be a top priority. All of these efforts to engage the public have concentrated on drawing people into the archives or through their computers into making use of existing collections. But there could be a great deal more outreach beyond the brick walls and websites of these institutions. A century ago, we're told, Arthur Doughty spent a lot of his time tramping around the United Kingdom and Europe uh, looking for manuscript collections. And I remember in the 1970s, the old PAC staff were still, in, still doing a lot of that kind of work. Today, archival staff are understandably intensely focused on managing their collections and encouraging citizens to use them, though in this difficult context, they're just as likely to be trying to reduce our expectations. I don't always get a sense that, there is, uh, that they are getting out to look for new records and engaging with potential users. 
in that way. How much effort is being put into reaching out to ordinary Canadians to encourage them to put their private collections into public hands? Tom Simon's uh, anecdotes this morning, uh, we, uh, most historians have many of those kinds of anecdotes about lost collections along the way. How much education is going on to sensitize the public to the value of personal diaries, collections of letters, photo albums, minute books of voluntary organizations, and so on, that are sitting in households and in offices across the country? Now, I'm not, I'm moving away from the, the focus that's, could, that's been through many of the presentations on um, di the um, born digital data, not because it's unimportant, but because I think there's a huge problem of the analog material that's still sitting out there, um, unat unattended and, and disappearing. Um, I actually have in mind, that I think some of the work of uh, Canada's History Society is, is reminiscent of what I'm going to pr propose, but I have in mind what could be a wonderfully rewarding process that would mimic the hugely popular antique roadshow. Perhaps in collaboration with local museums or historical societies, archives could hold well-publicized events in public libraries, community centers, or shopping malls to encourage people to bring out the records that have been moldering away in their attics and basements. If feasible, the proceedings could be televised or podcast. Certainly a good audience could be assembled. These could be educational events on the historical importance of these documents, not just the commercial value of them, which antique, the Antique Roadshow is interested in, and on the best practices for preserving them. Popular and academic historians could, be, um, could, could join the archival staff in helping with interp uh, historical interpretation. If people wanted to, didn't want to donate their records, they could be scanned on the spot and brought into the public domain to be shared by the whole community and to enrich historical possibilities, or research possibilities. Through this process, Canadians would find public archives more accessible, less intimidating, and more relevant to their lives. It would validate the history that most people, as that, that project I referred to indicated, that most people, the kind of history that most people think matters, that of themselves, their families, and their immediate communities. In a similar way, archives could be reaching out with oral history projects that tap into fading memories. I didn't see any reference to oral history in the, any of the think pieces that were presented. I may have missed them, but we, we now have three or four decades of rich experience in carrying out interviews with Canadians to tap into experience that would otherwise be lost. Archives are still the best place for gathering in and storing these memories. They can now be recorded digitally and made available much more widely than in the past. It may be that archives will need to work in partnership with intermediary groups to be able to engage in this kind of research, this kind of outreach. At York, we have two such groups that are working with York University archives and that I think are excellent models for public engagement. Each grew out of the research projects of PhD students in our history department, one in the post-war history of Toronto's Portuguese Canadians, and the other covering Hellenic immigrants. The Portuguese Canadian History Project and the Greek Canadian History Project have developed working relationships with the university archives in which they locate archival material being held in private hands. Um, um, negotiate with the usually elderly citizens in those communities to donate their records and then assist in the archival identification of them. Equally importantly, they've used materials collected in this way to create small exhibitions so that the communities can collectively appreciate what's been assembled in this distinctive archive. The Portuguese Canadian Project organized an exhibition of photographs that was first displayed in City Hall and then last summer as part of the city's downtown summer uh, street festival in the Portuguese neighborhoods just uh, south of here. At least some of those who saw those pictures must have noticed the connection to a university archives that they would otherwise never have heard of. And this resonates strongly with what uh, uh, Laura was saying, where she sitting, lost track, yeah. No, the, the last, the from my, my doco, yeah. Um, what I'm trying to argue is that the hope for the future of archives and for its engagement with the public must rest in part on the ongoing fascination of millions of Canadians with what happened in the past, especially a past they can reach through their own family connections. But that, must, that there must be some new approaches to tapping into that enthusiasm. It involves more than loading up an archival website with material that can, Canadians can reach on their computers. That's certainly important. It means trying to change the public face of archives and make the archival process more participatory and engaging for communities not just for individuals. 
Go out and find people, show them you care about their history, and they'll be much more ready to challenge politicians who want to further erode an already fragile system.